I want to welcome you all here this afternoon as we join together in this special time of remembering and reflecting and celebrating the life of our friend Cameron Sollenberger. You know, I was thinking about it a little bit yesterday morning as I was leaving men's breakfast and, and, and heading to uh, a funeral service of one of our other cherished church members, Bill Bardwell. And I remember that it was last year as I was leaving men's breakfast that I got the phone call to uh, have the opportunity to go spend uh, some of <clears throat> Cameron's last moments here on earth with him at the hospital. And it seemed strange to me as I was leaving the church yesterday to think that it's already been a year, a year since Cameron's passing, a year since Cameron joined the heavenly chorus. You know, grief has a funny way of affecting each of us. Uh, for some of us, we can bury it behind a closet and hide it for many, many, many years, and then it comes welling up like a, a spring that's bursting forth. For others of us, we wear grief on our sleeve. It's part of our emotions, a part of who we are. And so wherever you're at in your grief journey today, uh, whether for Cameron or for someone else, this service is an opportunity for you to let that grief out from behind the door or from behind uh, the, the face that you put on or behind uh, the box that you keep it in. It's okay. This is a safe place and an opportunity for all of us to, to know and to express not only the love that we have for Cameron, but also the love that we have and we find in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you join us in singing our first hymn? Uh, you can remain seated. There is a bomb in Gilead. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever leaves and believe, lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. My friends, Cameron believed. 
He believed in the God of love. He believed in the God of promise. He believed in the God that goes before us to make a way. He believed in an eternal life that knows no sorrow, no struggle, only the gift of everlasting peace. Our time here today is a personal time. It is a quiet time of gentle reflection where we can connect with the God who loves us, who encourages us, and who has promised to be what we need in all parts of life in order to live fully and to live well in a loving relationship with Jesus and with each other. As Pastor Gregory said, we've come to mark the first anniversary of Cameron's death as the first year of any loss has many markers in it, and it has much to teach us about the journey of grief. <clears throat> there are the first holidays, the first birthdays, the first time that something happened which had meaning to us with the person who died. Cameron's death was a shock to us, and how we process that experience is unique to each one of us. There is no right or wrong way to grieve, but our hope today is to be open to the learnings as you go down that path for you. Open to the learnings and then use those learnings to move through the experiences of grief and loss so that we can live our lives well in honor of our loved ones who have died. Healing from our losses comes when we can acknowledge the reality of the loss, we can learn from the reality and choose to bring the learnings into our life and go on. In grief work now, we don't even use the words anymore of get over our grief. Maybe you've heard that sometime in the past. People need to get over it or <clears throat> move on. And we don't use the words get over because that's not the goal. The goal is to assimilate the experience into our life story and go on. We are <clears throat> sensitive today and aware of all the loved ones represented in this room lost to death in our lives. And I know there are many of you here today who are carrying that very tender feeling with you in the loss of your loved ones in recent times. And we know that they are with us. We carry them with us in every heartbeat and every breath we take, don't we? And over time, that becomes the blessing. <clears throat> Excuse me. To help us find courage and focus. For centuries, Christians have turned to the scripture to guide us and to teach us. Our first scripture is from Psalm 121. I'm just going to ask you to focus, if you would, on this picture over here of Jesus reaching out to you as you hear these words. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Amen. And I just invite us to a short time of silent reflection to think about those words. Psalm 121. I will lift my eyes to the hills. And to think about even the posture of just lifting your eyes. I'm talking out here, and if I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes. And that's what Jesus is doing. So in our moment of silent reflection, Randy will just um, 
<coughs> augment that with some soft piano. Hear these words from John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms, and if it were not so, I would have told you. But I go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to be with me where I am. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Another time of silent reflection for you to think about what those words say to you today. Now we hear from Lamentations in the third chapter. And let's turn our focus to the other picture of Jesus as you hear these words. Again, hands outstretched, welcoming, open. The words in Lamentations say, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. And the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. Be thou our vision, God, and 
We pray, God, that you would bless the reading and the hearing of these words for our spirits to be encouraged. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. On this first anniversary of Cameron's death, we've gathered today in a place that Cameron loved. One of the places of his music and where he lived out his faith. As a church person here, staff person here, Cameron touched many lives, as we know, and he brought the love of Jesus alive in this place. Today we remember and celebrate the gift of his friendship, the gift of his light, and the gift of his love. Our feelings of grief and loss walk alongside our gratitude for his life and for all that we were able to share with him. And today as we've gathered, we are thinking about what healing from our losses looks like to us as people of faith. Rachel Naomi Remen, the spiritual writer and doctor out in California wrote, <clears throat> grieving allows us to heal. Have you thought about it that way? Grieving allows us to heal, to remember with love rather than pain. And I think that is the blessing that comes over time, to remember with love rather than pain. It is a sorting process, she says. One by one, you let go of the things that are gone and you mourn for them. And one by one, you take hold of the things that have become a part of who you are and you build again. Healing comes to us when we are able to work through the four tasks, tasks of grieving. The first is to accept the reality of the loss, that this has really happened. The second is to process the pain of the grief. You know, grief affects us physically, emotionally, spiritually, and cognitively. When we acknowledge the pain we feel, the emotions can be processed in healthy ways. And that's what the process of healing is about. The third task is to adjust to a world without the deceased. We make adjustments and we seek new understandings of the purpose and meaning of life. And then the fourth task is to find an enduring connection with the deceased in the midst of embarking on new life. The tasks of grief are not challenges to overcome, but they are measures of progress, moving in the cycle of grief. <clears throat> Healing allows us to see with eyes of gratitude and love rather than only through pain and disappointment. As time goes, our coping skills grow and our remembering becomes about peace in our hearts and in our lives. In this time of reflection today, it is good to remember the lessons we learned from Cameron, and perhaps you're thinking about all the lessons that you've learned from your loved ones as well, and to be grateful for these gifts. <clears throat> we just want to remember today that, first of all, Cameron was a gatherer, wasn't he? He brought people together. He took you into the group. And this came naturally to him as he grew up with this experience. He used to say there could be 50 people at the Thanksgiving table where he was. People he didn't know from all walks of life. Cameron encouraged you and he helped you do things you never knew you could. Did any of you experience that? Singing in a group or by yourself. Being in a play leading an event, learning something new. Cameron made you feel welcome, like you had something special to offer. Sometimes he believed in you before you believed in yourself. I know that to be true for me. He'd say, we can do this. We can. We'd have an idea. We can do it. We can do it. And he would believe it before he could see it. <clears throat> Secondly, Cameron lived his passion. 
His passion of music, of teaching, of singing, of directing, playing the piano. He had a gift uh, to minister to people's needs and hurt, and he had a unique, unique way of being present for people. And the love of Christ in him was so evident. And I think one of the things I will always remember about him, in, in living out his passion, he turned everything back to God. He always reminded me and reminded all of us about why we're doing this. Why are we in worship? Why are we in the church? Why are we singing? at Easter. He reminded us that we were here to glorify God and to live more authentically as people of faith. And then thirdly, I think Cameron used every gift God gave him. Didn't he? he used every gift. Yeah, I think he's one of the people in my life that I, I don't, I, that's such a true statement for him. I don't know many people that have used all their gifts like Cameron did. And so today, you know, how do we express our gratitude for that and just embrace that uh, into our hearts and be thankful? Because he lived that way. He used his gifts. Because he did that, our lives have been changed. And in some ways, we are better. We are stronger we are able to live out more of who we are. I asked him after my husband and I attended the Color Purple at Revival Theater. Some of you were at that show, I know. We were leaving and he just happened to be walking out then and I asked him, is there anything he could not play or sing? Was there anything? And he just kind of looked at us and, and he just kind of laughed and he really didn't answer the question. But on the way home, it struck me that he didn't say no. He didn't say no, that there was something he could not sing or play. I think I was on to something there. So I just encourage you to think about the lessons that you have learned from Cameron. Mine have been <clears throat> that he used every gift, he lived out his passion, and that he was a gatherer. He brought us all in, and we are better for it. So as we sing now again, I just think about what are those lessons for you? And cherish them in your heart. Let them fill you up. You sing with me the song titled, We Come to You for Healing, Lord. It's on the inside of your... <clears throat>
John, could we lower our lights a little bit maybe here? Especially like, all over maybe a little bit. <clears throat> we wanted to do a candle um, lighting in remember of, remembrance of Cameron. We did um, one at his service as well and it just gives us a great, that's perfect, thank you a great time of uh, reflection and to remind us that the light of love lives on. The light of his love is here. Theologian Frederick Buchner has written these words about a prayer of remembrance. When you remember me, it means that you have carried something of who I am with you. That I have left some mark of who I am on who you are. It means that you can summon me back to your mind, even though countless years and miles may stand between us. It means that if we meet again, you will know me. It means that even after I die, you can still see my face and hear my voice and speak to me in your heart. So today we light these candles in honor and memory of Cameron, reminding ourselves that the light of love lives on, and we have the opportunity to share that light of love with the world. As we light one candle in honor of our collective mourning, as we have grieved and continue to grieve the loss of our loved one, Cameron, we acknowledge that the intensity of our grief and the suffering represents the depths of our love, and that tears are a testament to the special relationship we all shared with Cameron. So we pray for faith and courage to face any dark days that we may continue to that may continue to come when we feel alone. We pray for the friendship of others to help bear the burden of our grief and theirs. We are thankful for the opportunity to gather with others who feel the power of this loss and understand our sorrow. We light a candle to celebrate the memories of Cameron that will always remain in our hearts. We give thanks for his life and remember his laughter, his smiles, the happy times we shared, and also any times of uncertainty or challenge that drew us closer together as well. We reflect on the many ways that our loved one, Cameron, helped shape our lives and bring out the best in us and the qualities that made him special and unique. We treasure the gift of having shared our lives with him and will cherish the legacy of love that endures. We light our next candle to acknowledge that peace that can be ours despite our pain and loss. We light this candle to represent the light of peace we give ourselves permission to seek rest and quiet reflection and allow our wounded hearts to experience this pain of our loss. We open our hearts to the spirits, Spirit of God to receive the peace that passes all understanding, and we give thanks for the love which carries us along in its embrace. We light our next candle to kindle hope for days of healing yet to come. We are transformed by loss in our lives and we walk an unfamiliar road beside it. But we are surrounded by God's love and grace and we are not alone. We are grateful for the capacity to love and the blessing to be loved. We are thankful that love endures even after death and that our connection to Cameron and all those that we carry in our hearts today, that our connection to the memories we shared will always be safe in our hearts. We invite the promise of hope to take root within us, trusting in God's goodness and faithfulness and in hope for our future. Amen. Let us all silently reflect for a moment on this light representing grief, memory, 
peace and hope. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness shall not overcome it. Thanks be to God for Cameron's light that lives on in us. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Cameron. Before he was ours, he is yours. For all that Cameron has made us, given us, to make us what we are, for that of him which lives and grows in each of us, and for his life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another, make us faithful to serve one another, and give us to know that peace and joy which is eternal life, through Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior. Amen. Join with me in the hymn on the back, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. to our 
closing blessing. And I would like you to, to ask you to do something, if you would. I'd like to make a circle around the front here, starting at the end of the piano over there, and just around the front with all of us. And those that maybe want to just sit in the front pew, uh, that would be just fine. And those that need a little more time to get forward, no worries. We're not in a hurry. And I'd like to do it in silence, to come in silence. Can we do that? Let's just come forward. You don't need anything. You don't need to bring anything. BJ, maybe come up on the bring it on the Come up and we'll just expand the circle a little bit here, okay? to do this so that we could at least look at each other a little bit and have this light lifted up in memory of Cameron as we think about, you know, this is something he'd do on a retreat, right? Gather everybody together and hold this light. And these candles are for you to take and uh, to remind you of this day and of this time. And with his picture here and the candles here, we are just reminded of the gift of God's love each of our lives to carry us and sustain us and bring us to a new day. So let's just lift those candles for a moment and we're lifting the light of God's love and all the gratitude we feel right now for all the blessings of those people that we're carrying in our hearts that have led the way in our lives and that we continue to love and continue to learn from in God's peace. Here is our closing blessing for healing. May you desire to be healed. May what is wounded in your life be restored to good health. May you be receptive to the ways in which healing needs to happen. May you take good care 
of yourself. May you extend compassion to all that hurts within your body, mind, and spirit. May you be patient with the time it takes to find healing. May you be aware of the wonders of your body, mind, and spirit, and their amazing capacity to heal. May the skills of all those who are caring for you be used to the best of their ability in returning you to good health. May you be open to receive from those who extend kindness, care, and compassion to you. May you rest peacefully under the sheltering wings of divine love, God's divine love, trusting in this gracious presence. find little moments of beauty and joy to sustain you. May you learn to keep hope alive in your heart. Blessed be the name of Frederick Cameron Sullenberger. Now and forever. Amen. And amen. Randy will lead us in kumbaya. <laughs> now. There's a couple songs in the hymnal. Let me grab. I was just playing through some stuff today because you can't leave a gathering of a musician without singing something. Does everybody know the one song, uh, Family of God? Just say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sing through it once. Just played it this morning while we were in church. You think I'd find it again quicker? There it is. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joined heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of Thank you so much for being here today. May you go with God's blessing and God's love and encouragement and some peace in your heart. And but before we go, let's just turn to our neighbor and offer a word of grace or blessing for the day. Peace. God bless you, BJ. Thank you. Yeah.